Dr. Jaffe, will you please explain the difference between hypothyroid, hyperthyroid, and share the appropriate tests to run to know if there really is a thyroid concern? Gosh, that's a very important question, and a lot depends on your philosophy, and I will give you my both perspective, my philosophy, but then I'm going to explain why I'm confident that I'm right. Thyroiditis. Anything that has an itis at the end, I-T-I-S, is an inflammatory condition, which means a repair deficit condition. So when we say thyroiditis of any kind, of any kind, we're saying that the repair of the blood thyroid barrier is impaired. That the blood thyroid barrier is allowing components of the flowing blood to get inside the gland. These include platelets and lymphocytes and other immune competent cells that are trying to repair, because remember it's the immune defense and repair system. But by definition, when we say thyroiditis, we mean a breach in the blood thyroid barrier. Of that, there is universal agreement. Now, you can see the five different kinds of thyroiditis as separate conditions, separate diagnoses, separate syndromes, or you can see them as a continuum. And I'm going to suggest that this is a continuum, and we see slices of life moments at a time. And if you have silent thyroiditis, something you may not have heard of, but silent thyroiditis, was defined in the early 1970s by Bruce Weintraub when he was at NIH. He then went on to a distinguished career at Mass General Hospital in Boston and an international acclaim because many people are slowly wearing out their thyroid but they have no symptoms, no symptoms of the thyroiditis, of the repair deficit. After silent thyroiditis, you generally have hypothyroidism, which means overstimulation to the point of exhaustion, and that's characterized by an elevated TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone TSH, an elevated TSH level, and a functionally low free T3 level. And here I might stop and say there are three tests that you must do to distinguish where the, where the thyroid issues are, and these are free T4, free T3, and TSH. Only the free forms of the hormone are active, and if you measure total hormone, you'll get confused. And by the way, doctors were confused for many decades until the free tests were developed in the 1970s when I was a young doctor at the clinical center. So we definitely know the test to do with regard to thyroiditis. It's free T3, free T4, and TSH. If the TSH is elevated, that diagnoses, from my point of view, hypothyroidism. The pituitary says your body needs more thyroid hormone, and we're going to stimulate you with thyroid-stimulating hormone to get more uh, thyroid hormone out of you. However, the free T3 the active form of thyroid hormone is actually made at the cell surface. So T4 is produced in your thyroid gland. The active T3 is produced at the receptor that needs the thyroid stimulation to occur. This is important because if the cell is acidotic and lacks magnesium, if the cell is under oxidative stress and lacks antioxidants like ascorbate and polyphenolics, if it lacks zinc, if it lacks any of the essential elements, the receptor can distort, its shape can change. And now you could, pervert, could produce, you could make, what's called reverse T3, which competes with active T3. So in complicated cases of hypothyroidism, I always include an RT3, a reverse T3 test. Now let's go along the continuum further. A kind of thyroiditis that occurs with some stimulation, but the gland is still strong. It hasn't been overstimulated to exhaustion. That's hyperthyroidism, known as Graves' disease. And if you persist all the way to the other end of the continuum, you get Decrevain's thyroiditis, which is known as burned-out thyroiditis. You now have no ability to repair the gland because the gland has been self-attacked for years. If you look at the history of medicine, and I think this is pretty accurate, Decrevain's thyroiditis was identified 
in the 1890s. Graves thyroiditis, hyperthyroidism, was diagnosed, I think, in the 30s. Hypothyroidism was well described in the 50s. Silent thyroiditis was just defined in the 70s by Bruce Weintraub. So to me, there's a continuum of thyroid functions. And when we do the right tests, we can see where we are on that continuum. But if you consider them to be separate conditions, that's OK, too. You still do the same test, free T3, free T4, and TSH, and you interpret them the same way. Now, I do think that the lab range for free T3 and free T4 is pretty reasonable, but I do disagree with most lab ranges for TSH. TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone, I agree with the thyroid society. I agree with the endocrine society. A healthy TSH is between 0.5 and 2.5. If you're above 2.5 international units, in my opinion, you have hypothyroidism. But if you look at the usual, that means the statistical range for TSH for most labs, it can go up to 4, 5, or 6. Because there are lots of people walking around in the ambulatory world who have functional hypothyroidism. Don't be one of them. It takes the joy out of life. It's hard to get restorative sleep. It's hard to express your love to those you really care about. Um, it's hard to stay on task and, and be productive. Um, these are the folks who say, I only have a few hours in the morning. I've got to get everything done because after lunch, I kind of shut down. And by the evening, you know, my get up and go has gotten up and gone and I can't find it anymore. So good night. So let's restore joy of living through the thyroid, one of the important endocrine glands. Let's make it happy because we repair the blood thyroid barrier. Let's reverse whatever kind of thyroid stress or distress we have so that we can live well and happy with a healthy thyroid for our entire life.